हेलो लर्नर्स वेलकम टू ऑनलाइन लेक्चर ऑन सब्जेक्ट हीट एंड मास ट्रांसफर इन करंट सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ कन्वेक्शन टाइप्स ऑफ कन्वेक्शन एंड देन डायमेंशन एनालिसिस एंड बकिंग हम्स पायथेरम इंट्रोडक्शन कन्वेक्शन हीट ट्रांसफर टेक्स प्लेस ड्यू टू एप्रिसिएबल मूवमेंट ऑफ द पार्टिकल्स इन द बेसिक part of the heat transfer we have studied that there are three modes of heat transfer conduction convection and radiation in case of convection heat transfer takes place due to the appreciable movement of the particles that is the particles of the material transport from one location to another let's understand this diagram if a water is taken in a jar and it is placed over the fire then heat will transfer from this fire to the base of this jar and further the heat will transfer to the water particles whenever the heat is absorbed by the water particles their density decreases and they move upward and the cold water particles which is having higher density they will move downwards and by this there is a appreciable movement of the water particles and this process is known as a convection current convection takes place within the fluid or from one hot surface to cold surface convection may takes place within the fluid or from a hot surface to the cold fluid here you can observe the heat is transferring from hot object to the air in free or natural convection heat transfer takes place due to virtue of density difference between hot and cold fluid here no external force is required for fluid movement let's understand this diagram if a hot object is placed on a plane surface then naturally the air will move on the surface of this hot object and will absorb the heat by convection but during the heat absorption the air density get decreases and it will move upward and this air is known as a warm air again naturally the cold air will come in contact with the hot object and transfers the heat this is a natural heat transfer takes place so it is known as a free or natural convection this process may takes longer time because there is a no external force is working in this system in case of forced convection external force is required or used to increase the fluid flow this helps to increase the heat transfer rate in this diagram you can see the hot plate is kept in front of a fan so what is the function of the fan this will increase the rate of flow of air over this plate so due to this increase the rate of flow of air the heat transfer rate increases in in case of forced convection heat transfer rate is more than free or natural convection now let us understand the heat transfer by convection let's first of all understand this physical configuration suppose this is a hot surface of having temperature t s that is temperature of surface and a fluid is flowing over this surface it may be air or water it is a free stream well movement t f is the temperature of this fluid and one situation is there temperature of this surface is greater than this fluid so that heat will transfer from this surface to the fluid we can convert the same physical configuration into equivalent electrical circuit where heat is flowing and we know that to transfer this heat there is a some resistance which is called as a thermal resistance represented by 1 upon h a where h is the convective heat transfer coefficient a is the surface area of this plate or surface then the rate equation for convection heat transfer between a surface and adjacent fluid is prescribed by newton's law of cooling what newton's law of cooling says q is equal to h a delta t q is the rate of convective not conductive q is the rate of convective heat transfer a is the surface area t s is the surface temperature t f is the fluid temperature and h is the convective heat transfer coefficient if you want to calculate the value of h we can transfer these two terms to the denominator of q we know that the unit of q is the watt or w surface area is in meter square 
and temperature is in degree centigrade or Kelvin. So unit of convective heat transfer coefficient H is watts per meter square degree centigrade or watts per meter square Kelvin. Now let us understand the important aspect of this chapter that is dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis is a mathematical technique in which various dimensions are studied to find the solution of various engineering problems. During engineering problem analysis, there are number of parameters or variables are involved and to do study each and individual parameter, it takes longer time and to find the better solution. So we use the dimensional analysis as a mathematical technique. Each physical phenomenon can be expressed by an equation. What are the different phenomenon occurs in the engineering are expressed by the equation and these equations are composed of variables or it is also called as physical quantities which may be dimensional or di non-dimensional means physical quantity either have the dimensions or they are non-dimensions. The method of dimension analysis was first used by scientist Nusselt to derive the mathematical equation for convective heat transfer coefficient for free as well as forced convection H for, to find the value of H for free and forced convection. Dimensional analysis is used to obtain the equations governing an unknown physical phenomenon in terms of important parameters influencing that phenomenon. If suppose we have to come across a situation where we are unknown about the physical phenomenon then it is difficult to find the influencing parameters. So dimensional analysis is used to identify these influencing parameters. These influencing parameters are organized into dimensional less group. It is also called as dimensionless numbers, thereby reducing the number of influencing parameter. If there are large number of influencing parameters affecting the system, then we have to convert these parameters into dimensionless groups. Dimension analysis for free and forced convection involves following step. How the dimensional analysis is carried out? Number one, determination of all the parameters or variables affecting the convective heat transfer coefficient, either in case of a free or forced convection. We have to first of all identify all the parameters or variables which are directly affecting the heat transfer. Second, writing influencing parameter in terms of the fundamental units. We know that there are four fundamental units mass, length, time and temperature. We have to identify the involvement of these fundamental parameter which with respect to this influencing parameters. Next, developing a mathematical expression for convective heat transfer coefficient in terms of fundamental unit by using principle of dimensional homogeneity. Now we have to derive a mathematical expression using these fundamental units grouping all the influencing parameters into non-dimensional number. Once these parameters are combined together, we have to convert these into the non-dimensional number. Now what are these numbers or dimensions? The various physical quantities used in the fluid phenomenon as in this chapter, we are dealing with the convection and here fluid motion is important factor it can be expressed in terms of fundamental quantities also it is called as primary quantities so the fundamental quantities are mass length time and temperature we have already discussed here mass length and time and temperature and it is represented by m l t and theta don't confuse t with the temperature here t is for time and theta is used for the temperature temperature is speci specially used in case of a compressible flow. Now what are the different methods of dimensional analysis? If the number of influencing variables in convective heat transfer coefficients are known, then the following two methods can be used to develop a mathematical expression. There are two methods, number one known is a Rayleigh method and second method is known as a Buckingham's Pi theorem. But this Rayleigh method is not much used. Here in application of dimensional analysis, determining the convective heat transfer coefficient for free and forced convection 
relic method is not much used because of certain limitation but these limitations are overcome by the buckingham's pi theorem method what is buckingham's pi theorem method it states that if there are n number of variable either they may be independent or dependent in a physical phenomenon and if there are m number of fundamental dimensions like m l t and theta then variables are arranged into n minus m dimensionless term which is called as pi terms it means in buckingham's pi theorem we are using the pi terms that is pi 1 pi 2 pi 3 and how many pi we have to take that is n minus m i will elaborate this phenomenon at the time of application in free and forced convection so watch my further videos bucking buckingham's pi theorem method can be applied for free as well as forced convection to determine the heat transfer coefficient so in the next lectures we are going to apply this buckingham's pi theorem method for free and forced convection now what is buckingham pi theorem each pi term is written in terms of repeating variable and one other variable in order to select repeating variable following methods should be followed or following steps should be followed number 1 number of repeating variable should be equal to the number of fundamental units involved in the physical phenomenon dependent variable should not be selected as a repeating variable and this is the most important factor the repeating variable should be selected in a such a way that one of the variable should contain a geometric property such as length diameter or height another repeating variable should contain a flow property such as velocity and acceleration and number 3 the third factor should be having fluid property such as viscosity density specific heat or weight i will explain this all factor at the time of application so watch my further videos next the selected repeating variable should not form a dimensionless group the selected repeating variable together must have same number of fundamental dimensions mean each variable should have the same dimensions and last no two selecting repeating variable should have the same dimensions means two variable should not have the same dimensions okay we will apply all these rule at the time of application of this method okay thank you